Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of a mid-year roundup, looking at some of your favorite songs from the last six months. I, I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> We have too many people in the community who enjoy black metal for black metal not to have come up this week at all. Now, to be fair, I don't 100% know that I'm in store for black metal, but Cessation of Hope, look at that uh, band logo. There is very small chance that this ends up not being black metal. So, let's dive into this and see what Sistvan is bringing to the table today. So we have moving dyads across the guitars. Ooh. Building a really nice atmosphere with this lengthy chord progression. Putting something melodic over it, very nice. So keeping the same chord progression we had with this new faster drum element beneath it. Oh, some nice bass movement. I didn't hear the bass at all in the last sections. Very clear production on even the vocals. And there's minor fluctuations in the vocal delivery as well based on vowel inflection. Very interesting. It provides just a, a, a hint of contrast through a rather monotonous sounds. We have a shifting rhythm on that ride symbol. <laughs> that looks fun. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's a shift in perceived pitch with the vocalist as well. Not in the opening black metal, the higher pitch nasally harsh that they have, but the lower growls and then that mid style that they have at the end right there. Yeah, both of those have differing perceived pitches to them. Create something mildly melodic out of it. It's very nice. This is beautiful. Bringing back that same lead guitar tone we had back at the uh, second section of the song. Layered harshes, okay. Lots of reverb on them too. I like how this melody was a continuation of the last section. Yeah, this would have been a really good candidate for last week's uh, The Good Black Metal theme. Interestingly, though, 
I don't know that I would have immediately picked up on it. Because, you see, here's the thing, like, last week, the theme was the good black metal. And it was uh, sort of a mixed bag as far as definition goes. Part of it was mostly an attempt to get more of a progressive black metal style um, on the channel. But also the other half was to try to find some black metal I would like. And that usually overlaps with the more progressive elements, combining black metal ideas with other genres. This is fairly straightforward black metal in a lot of ways. It does take some liberties and moves away from that uh, traditional third wave of sound, which we do get in a, in a vast majority of this track, but they, they explore other sounds as well. But this feels a lot closer to my idea of black metal than I would expect for a song that kind of works for me. I don't know if I could listen to a whole album of this, but I did enjoy a majority of the nine minutes here. It does last a little long in sections. I think that the bridge took a while to get into. That could have been cut back a little bit. And the ending had just a little bit too much repetition too. We were at the peak. Just finish the song up. They decided to sit at that peak for quite some time though. For yeah, It has its pros and cons. There were definitely parts in it that I think worked well because of the length, but there's also a couple of times I was like, okay, let's get to the next part now. And you know, that's just going to be me, right? <laughs> I'm, I, I really like my music to go somewhere. And there's a couple of times I'm, I'm listening to sections here and I'm like, dang, I would not have the patience to write this. I would have moved on already. And they, they sit within it. And sometimes I think it pays off. And sometimes subjectively, I don't think it does. So, let's get to what this song is doing, though. Some of the cool things here. First of all, it's just general flow. Honestly, so many of these sections move into each other exceptionally well. We have very few harsh transitions, and the ones that are utilized, I feel, are done for an artistic purpose. We kick the song off with some dyads. And some heavy drumming. Eighth notes here. We'll move into the 16th eventually. But we have this core idea. It's an eight bar progression, I believe. Or an eight chord progression. Let me put it that way. And uh, it's beautiful. Wonderful stuff here. I love it. Especially in the next section. When we, when we bring in the lead melody guitar. On top of these moving dyads. And we get not only just a melody on top of foundation. But we also get triads. We get an expansion of the emotional resonance. Of these chord progressions. As we hear more, chord, more notes in each of the chords. Beautiful stuff. Especially as the melody itself doesn't always stick on one note per chord. And so we actually get to hear some movement within the chord progressions it's just it's wonderfully written and from a a chordal theory perspective also it is quite a bit more deep than a lot of metal tends to go and this is something that i've spoken about even just last week i think about black metal is that as far as chord progression goes and chord theory in general black metal is the genre that tends to do this exceptionally well that's not to say that you can't find some death metal probably in the technical or progressive realm that has really neat chordal work in it but it feels like black metal is just sort of baked in it is a part of learning black metal is writing cool chord progressions and getting outside of the standard metal repertoire to expand into other realms and this is it's no no exception to that they just do a fantastic job of finding these cool movements within the chords. And yeah, we do start off with dyads. And the thing with the, with dyads is that it's only two notes at a time. It doesn't give a lot of information, but it also means that you can kind of take the ideas in any direction you want. Because outside of playing notes that are like a half step apart, you're usually not going to end up with anything too dissonant. That's going to make the high compression and distortion of your instruments amplify any sort of heavy distortion in the uh, in the harmonic area to uh, amplify that dissonance but once we start adding that third guitar in here we start getting the triads in here this is where things can get really interesting if you don't know what you're doing and that's where Sistvan ends up 
uh, showcasing their strength is that they know what they're doing. They, they know how to move through these chords, how to use them to manipulate the emotion, the atmosphere of the song in ways that all not necessarily consistently use positive harmony or consonant harmony, but know how to utilize some darkness, some tension, some dissonance in ways that works well with the heavy distortion that they have at play. It is, as I said, very masterful use of the harmonic area. Now, that's actually not what I wanted to talk about transitions, but yeah, I mean, their harmony work is f fantastic too. But we have... We have the, the introductory dyads with the drums. There might be bass in here. I didn't hear any until we got to the first verse. But from here, we add on the lead melody guitar and the drums shift over to 16th notes while we retain the same chord dyads in the guitar work. From here, we take that similar chord progression, change a few key parts of it to modulate it just a hair bit but still have enough left over to say okay our first verse is still tied to our intro the inch i mean the, the verse into the chorus retains many of the same ideas but explores them differently rhythmically while also giving the bass new ideas what you might be seeing here is a pattern where as we transition from the intro to the guitar led intro to the verse to the chorus there's always something from the previous section left over carried into the new section while things around it might change it actually to me feels like one fluid section it's not so much about intro verse chorus as much as how the song starts and then the small change here and the small change here and the small change here and honestly, I'm not going to tell you I know exactly where the verse turns into the chorus. In fact, there might not be any change at all. My real only notion there that I can pick up is the new bass idea that happens towards the end of the start of the verse before we come back to the higher pitched nasally vocals, which is, to me, the beginning of a verse. Um, and the timbre shift in the vocalist, moving away from the, the, the more nasally harsh into the growls. And so I don't know if you would necessarily call that a chorus, but it is the section that I feel comes after the verse, which traditionally is the chorus. But there's so many elements that are similar between these two that it just feels like a natural movement from one idea to the next, less or more so than distinct moments, unique sections of a song. So we have the verse and the chorus and the verse and the chorus. I don't think anything happens between them. There's just a little instrumental bit between our first chorus and our second verse. And then we come to the bridge. This is, I think, the only harsh transition in the entire song. It is just a complete stopping of sound everywhere. I think there's a little bit of reverb that comes off from the last guitar notes and stuff like that. And then we start the rest of the song, honestly. This is the um, the really cool, chill, laid-back, atmospheric, rhythmically dense, layered, slow burn section. That's a lot of descriptive words. But I think it's best to showcase how different this section is in as many parameters as possible to where we came from. I really love that. And there really isn't going to be a nice way to move between such su such different ideas. And so we just stop one idea, allow it to fade out, and then start the next. And it's honestly, like I said the only time that we have this harshness of transition. And it might even have a thematic purpose, too. I don't know. We'll get into the lyrics about that. We'll see if anything happens there specifically. But we do have a massive atmospheric and tonal change here as well. Now, staying on the topic of uh, transitions, we'll come back to some of these sections and, and what they're doing. But this section grows and grows and grows, adding new lines on top of all of them until we have every instrument at play. 
and then the guitars kick into overdrive, the drums begin to drum just a little bit harder to get that extra metal-y attack out of it, and we build up into the outro of the song, we throw in some harsh vocals in there, and now we have a guitar melody that's going to take us through the entire rest of the song. I believe this is fully linear. If there is a repetition to it, I didn't pick up on it. And even as the drums are going to move from these uh, the syncopated idea from the previous section into the constant eighth notes, into the constant sixteenth notes, um, and the guitars are going to shift from the more rhythmic layered section to the constant sixteenth notes for um, you know for the dyads, and then they're going to shift the chord progression of those dyads into the outro. All of that's going to gradually increase in intensity, but we have this one guitar melody over top that's just going to have this fluid, linear, forward-facing melodic line through all of it. It's going to tie it all together. That melody says this is all one section, and any changes that you hear underneath that mel melody are only there to embellish what the melody is doing, to lean into any sort of tension or dissonance or uh, atmospheric element, any emotion, so that the full song can push through with what the melody itself is doing. It is just wonderfully written in the most a smooth way of just bringing everything together by the end of the track. It is, in my experience, a rarity to hear black metal that moves through concepts as smoothly as this does. Black metal either has a lot of harsh transitions or they have no transitions and it's just 16th notes all the time. <laughs> and uh, this is just, this is wonderful. It really is, as far as structure and movement between ideas, it follows what sounds to me a pretty standard verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, outro, and it finds just the easiest way to get between all those sections in order to create the smoothest ride possible, which might be a strange adjective for something as aggressive and extreme as this, but the movement between ideas is exceptionally smooth here. Uh, going back to the verse, I already mentioned the guitars, their dyads, chord stuff. I mentioned the growls, the dexterity of the vocalist having multiple different styles of vocal deliveries. I didn't really talk about the bass. I really love the bass in all of this song that I can hear it. Again, I didn't really hear it in the intro. I'm not too sure what that was about. The bass is a bit quiet, even in the verse. I have to purposefully listen for it. And it could be that it was just so quiet, maybe playing the same thing that the guitars are playing in the intro, that it kind of got snuck underneath all of that and hidden. Regardless, it has a fresh idea, a moving concept, almost a counterpoint against the vocal growls here, where you can hear a moving idea that has rhythmic syncopation to it, melodic change, there's there's pitch shifting in it. It is very cool to hear this. It isn't just a bass playing root tones or walking bass lines or something. This is a legit melody. And it plays it alongside the vocals. Now the vocals are growled or screamed here. I'm not entirely sure. They are harsh vocals. They don't have pitches themselves. So it's difficult to call what the vocals are doing a melody. But if you could entertain me for a moment and consider it melodic in some sense, a lead melody line, despite not really being focused on pitch, the bass would be playing counterpoint to the vocals. And I really love this because even if this wasn't the case, which it isn't, there, there's no counterpoint here because there's only one melody, it comes from the bass. But it also means that the bass is playing the lead melody here. It's fascinating. I do wish it, it was bumped up a little bit in the mix. Like I said, I have to really listen for it. I don't I don't know if it would improve it. I think it is fairly balanced here. I picked up on it immediately, which should tell me it's loud enough. It's just I still have to really put my ear towards it and be like, okay, where's the bass? Okay, there's the bass area. There it is. Okay, I found it now. 
I, I wish it was just a hair bit louder because it is the lead melody line and it's just not given that spotlight treatment. Um, but I do think it's awesome because the guitars are giving us our foundation. They're giving us the, the chordal progression. They're giving us the atmosphere. The drums and vocals are giving us the rhythm, the texture of everything. And then the bass is the melody. It's just snuck down there a little bit. You just got to hear for it. Uh, but I think that's a really nice balancing of things, and I wish more bands would recognize that. Especially black metal, where there is so much uh, foundational chordal work coming from your guitars. Your your vocalist is screaming, your drums are going crazy. Especially when you have the really consistent 8th or 16th note drumming. Not really focusing on anything other than the repetition of that, so it turns into almost a white noise element. You have one more pitched instrument. Your bass, use it, give it melody. <laughs> it's like, it's such an obvious thing to me, and yet it is just not a part of that traditional black metal sound. And I, I think it's a missed opportunity, and a song like this really showcases why I think it's a missed opportunity. It does a phenomenal job there and helps push that section forward. It gives it some sort of contrast against all the repetition going on. Um, something else that was pretty cool. Oh, just a uh, real quick, uh, the vocal inflection, there are like perceived pitch changes, not necessarily on the more nasally harsh vocal that we have during the verse, but once he enters into the growl and then kind of pushes that up and reaches this mid growl section, it almost sounds like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's uh. You can begin to hear different vowels have different perceived pitches to them. It almost sounds like he's raising and, and lowering in pitches. It's very cool. It's what I love in harsh vocals is those shifting perceived pitches. And uh, a lot of black metal just doesn't utilize that. So I'm glad to hear it here. It tends to be something you would hear in... Uh, Post-hardcore, metalcore, anything that really comes from that hardcore punk sound but brings in metallic elements, that seems to be where this type of vocal gets utilized most. When I think of death metal, when I think of black metal, um, you know, I just, I don't think of, of non-monotonous harsh vocals. And so it's very cool to hear this here because it's just not something I associate with the genre too much. The bridge. We got to talk about this, right? So we have a single guitar that comes in. Kind of melodic. It's a riff with a lot of pitches to it, but it is a tight loop. And we will hear this loop over and over and over. It's a riff. But it has rhythmic syncopation to it. It has differing pitches to it. By itself, I don't really think it's that interesting. And we listen to it sort of by itself for a while. On the second repetition, so the third time through, we have the bass come in and play the root tone of the beginning of each chord progression. So, it adds a little bit of extra information, but not really a lot. And so I ended up hearing this same idea four times through before we moved on, and it's not a fast-moving idea either. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds to get through, which means we have a full minute of, at least from what I took in from a, a more analytical perspective, of no new information. That is a long time for a song to sit still. This is what I was talking about where I said I thought maybe the bridge could, be, could have been tightened up a little bit. I think it progresses well enough, well enough because after the bass comes in, we have another guitar. It gives us counterpoint. It gives us rhythmic syncopation. It gives us new harmonic information. And then the drums come in with that super syncopated idea and things begin to get very complicated on a rhythmic level. This was very cool. And this was, I think, the first moment when I said something along the lines of, oh, this part's beautiful. Because we had finally reached a section where I felt like we were beginning to move into something a bit more complete of a vision. And so I think that this back half works well, adding one layer at a time, but it would have been nice, I think, on that third time through to have added two new layers, maybe the bass and that second guitar line, and then began to add things one at a time. It just doesn't move too fast at the beginning, and it ends up feeling more stagnant than the rest of the, the slow burn is. Small change, 
would have really only removed 15 or so seconds, would have tightened the pacing up a ton though. Um, but again, you know, it's a subjective thing. You might have listened to it and thought it was perfectly paced, really enjoyed the movement of it. Really, I mean, everybody hears music differently. Everyone has different tastes too. So, you know, that's just my opinion about it. I'm not going to say it improves it. I just would have enjoyed it more. Um, but yeah, once we have everything in here and then the bass picks up its new line. Yeah, this is where things get complex and very enjoyable for me. And I just love the entire painting of this section. It is a bit sorrowful there is a bit of a, a negativity to it but there's also a sense of of awe within it as well and of course the general beauty which i think comes with that awe it is it is you know what i said i don't know oh i said sorrow but i think somber is actually a better word for it. not necessarily sad but just dreary like like fog over a lake on an early morning, the sun's barely come up. It's not necessarily sad, but it's definitely darker. That's what this sounds like to me. Uh, and then from here, as I mentioned, everything is just adding more to it. We already went over all that. Um, I think that's about it that I want to touch on. The general idea and then a bunch of little ideas that I liked. I mean, generally here we talk about atmosphere, theme, story, what I heard. So I'll touch on this real quick because I think they did a great job crafting atmosphere and emotion throughout this. So I think it'd be a great disservice not to bring this up. The beginning of the song does have some beauty to it. But there's also this element of the unknown, which kind of goes alongside a concept of awe, but I think in a different direction. When you, when you, when I think of something that is awesome, I almost have uh, an angelic element to it, like a choir, that, that type of really bright, wide chords that emphasize, I don't know, a feeling beyond, beyond joy, beyond it's just pure positivity. I don't know if that makes sense. It's not like there's there's happiness tied to it. There's not elation of any type. It isn't an emotional feeling of positivity. It is like a musical representation of the pure, unemotional context of positivity, if that makes sense. That's what awe feels like to me. And we do hear that in the bridge, but this part is, it's something a little different. It still reaches some of those heights, but there's an emotional component to it. And so I'm not entirely sure how I feel about the beginning. It does have some darker undertones and it ends up feeling a bit mixed that way. Some of the transitional chords and leading tones also end up creating a lot of tension, which is normal for a chord progression, but when you mix it with the already complex emotional landscape that they're crafting, you have to read those as more emotion, and it ends up becoming quite complex. There is a, a mixed, beautiful sorrow here at the beginning, but it also feels a little mysterious. Like waking up on a Saturday that you haven't planned anything for and you figure anything can go. You're just going to wing it and see what happens. That sort of energy of what can happen today. Not really mystery, I suppose. It's not the right word for it. But an unendingness, an openness, I suppose. The verse and chorus, I kind of lose the story. <laughs> That becomes very black metal aggressiveness. We do have that chord progression that that we had at the beginning, but because of the higher intensity in the drums and because of the melody in the bass and the growls coming through, it ends up feeling just a bit standard metal to me, unfortunately. It's something I would need to spend more time with, and it's just... One of those things that I need to work on as a skill, you give me a chord progression, I can pick it up. You give me a chord progression with, with some aggressive metal sounds, and I tend to take that surface level metal as what the section is. And it's just, it 
it's a hurdle I got to get over. We've been doing this for years, and there's some sections I'm like, that just sounds like metal to me. <laughs> I have no emotional read on it. But then we get to the awe of the bridge, and then this translates as we progress through and bring in that lead guitar melody on top of the metal section, elation, elevation, a, a rising up, uh, a becoming better than you were is what I get out of that. And so to me, I kind of get this story of someone who is not at the best point in their life. There might be hope on the horizon, but where they are now isn't fantastic. And then we have maybe the beauty of hope getting to that point and realizing that there is sunshine on the other side. You just got to get up the hill. And then the trek of getting up that hill and reaching a new height and seeing something good on the other side. Now, if anybody remembers the title of the song, this is probably not that. To me, this is about finding hope and getting out of a dark place and crawling out of a pit and continuing on with, the, with your life in a better way. The song's called Cessation of Hope which makes me think that the song might be trying to find beauty in the dismal of thinking my life isn't going to ever get any better, I refuse to hope for that, and finding beauty in the darkness. <laughs> I kind of hope not, but it's black metal, man. That's where we're going, right? Let's find out. Let's read some lyrics to this and see what they're singing about. Yeah, it's definitely the latter. It kicks off, very first stanza, there was once the dawn of tomorrow, there was once the unwritten page, there was hope we glimpsed once and held, watched as it withered away. It's about realizing that there won't be a better tomorrow, that your life is as good as it gets right now, and while you might want something better, it's never going to happen. The chorus says, do we bring our own devastation? Do we choose the hill upon which we die? The tears that fell, the cold elimination, lamentation? Yeah, to lament. So yeah, the cold lamentation, thoughts that linger on through the night. So it isn't just something that consumes us, that brings us great sorrow, that makes us feel cold. It's not just something we think about during the day. It lingers on through the night. It stops us from sleeping. Things suck. <laughs> and there's there's no better tomorrow. This is just life. And, you know, there's, there's two ways to go about this, really. Well, I guess three. As far as, like, the traditional routes for this is one... Yeah, life does suck, and maybe things won't get better, but I'm going to make the best of what I have. B is life sucks, and things aren't going to get better, so I'm just going to embrace the darkness. And C, of course this is the worst case scenario, and this is where the song goes. Life sucks, and there's no better tomorrow, so why live for tomorrow at all? And in the bridge, leading into the outro, when the vocals come back, says, Somehow I know this pastoral glade, serene from an old recurring dream, I saw places I had never seen. The idea that I have this vision of what life could be. Good. Serene. And I know I'll never have that. It's this carrot that gets teased in front of me. So he says, the bottle... The rope, the cessation of hope, and implies that they commit suicide. Yeah, so uh, the escalating beauty and feeling of awe that I had towards the end of the song seems to be some sort of acceptance sonically painted into the song. And a solidification of intent. That if life isn't going to get better, then I will change what tomorrow is the only way I can. And finding 
hope or beauty within that choice. And, you know, I've made this joke, I think, on the uh, the live stream, but I also, I've made it in comments before, too. I'm a tuning fork for specific things in black metal. <laughs> if I enjoy a black metal song that isn't like weird fringe stuff, but like it's legitimately pretty much black metal, just done really well, either the members are terrible people, or the song's lyrics are something I never want to revisit. I don't think that I have enjoyed a single black metal song in a reaction and walked away from it being able to live with myself if I had listened to it again, which sucks every time. I love the music, hate the people, or love the music, hate the lyrics, and there's always something that keeps me from returning to it, and so I'm not going to listen to this song again. I don't want to experience these emotions lyrically, and the thing is, too, it's one of those things I even mentioned during the reaction, is that the production on the vocals actually makes them kind of clear. I was picking up some words here and there, not enough for phrases, but you give me the song five, ten more times, and I would start to be able to hear the words from the lyrics, or from the vocals. And so it's not even a thing of ignoring them. It's they're front and center. They're placed in the spotlight where I kind of wish the bass was even more now. P push those vocals into the mix. Well, I don't usually ask for that. Oh, every single time. I just need a theme, right? Give me some black metal I'll enjoy where I can listen to it again after I know what it's about. <laughs> Why is that such a hard ask? Those are my thoughts on Sistvan's, what is this song called? Decay of, Cessation of Hope. <sighs> what are your thoughts on this? Did you enjoy this? Is there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to correct me on or add on to what I said or anything like that? Maybe just have your own thoughts, opinions, and perspectives about it. Toss all that stuff down in the comment section. Above that, in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, or ring the bell. And ring the bell? Yeah, do one or the other or all three. It's all it's fine by me. Just... Whatever you want to do, I suppose. It, it helps the channel. I appreciate it. <laughs> we have a special selection coming up next. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC. We're going to continue on with this week's theme of checking out some of your favorite songs that have released this year so far. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to, and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.